Knuckles Chaotic, 995. Get out of my way. Sonic Crackers became this, Knuckles Chaotic. Sadly, this game was rushed out for the Sega 32X, an adapter that was designed to try and keep the Mega Drive, Genesis, alive! It featured seven playable characters from Knuckles and Mighty to new characters like SPO, Vector, Charmy, Heavy, and Bomb. Two characters we never see again. The game is on the list of most wanted Sonic games in the collection, even though you can play it on an emulator, and it's crap. Tails Sky Patrol, 1995. Tails kept the Game Gear alive with Tails Sky Patrol, a game that featured Tails flying non-stop throwing a ring at bad guys. The villain was some witch who we never see again, still, we should add her to the family tree. It is considered one of the worst Sonic games ever made. Tails Adventure, 1995. Tails got his third game, titled Tails Adventure, and it was the first Sonic game to mix platforming with RPG elements. It was well received, making us wonder if Sega will produce a sequel for the 3DS. Sonic Labyrinth, 1995. Sonic continued to spew out more Game Gear titles with the awful Sonic Labyrinth. The game strips away everything that makes Sonic great. The speed, the loops, the fun. While it's considered the worst Sonic game ever, there are fans that actually like this game. Sonic Compilation, 1995. Sonic 1, 2, and Bean Mean Machine were released onto one cartridge. Makes you wonder why Sonic 3 and Knuckles had to be split into two, considering this cartridge is pretty much the same size. Sonic the Movie, 1996. Sonic had two anime specials that got combined into one animated movie. The movie involved Sonic and Tails having to stop a generator from exploding, only to find out it's a ploy to take Sonic's data and make Metal Sonic. It was a fun movie and considered the best Sonic anime, with lots of fans wanting a new series based off this film. It got a release in 1999 in US and UK. Sonic the Fighters, 1996. Sonic zoomed back to the arcades with a fighting game that had a stupid plot. You see, Tails built a spaceship to fly to the Death Egg, but made it only one seater. So now everyone decides to fight each other so they can be the one to take down Robotnik. It featured many recognizable characters, and even two new faces such as Bean and Bark. Sega stopped the game being released for the Sega Saturn, as they didn't want to see their mascot get beaten up. Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, 1996. Sonic ended his time on the Mega Drive with Sonic 3D. Although the game isn't really 3D, it's just viewed from an isometric perspective. Fans complained that it was too slow, but the soundtrack was praised as being some of the best Sonic music ever. It was re-released from the Sega Saturn and was criticized for long loading times and no save feature. Sonic Schoolhouse, 1996. Sonic Random's return was Sonic Schoolhouse, which was an educational game for the PC. It teaches you maths, reading, and spelling, with Sonic acting as your guide with his weird sounding voice that makes you want to kill a bunch of gorillas. Every time you answer a question, you get another gumball. Sonic Blast, 1996. Sonic Blast was Sonic's final Game Gear adventure, and Sonic and Knuckles became pre-rendered graphics. Which, for an 8x system, is very impressive. Too bad the gameplay was as clunky as a battle in Robot Wars. Beat like weaponry. Kill a character maneuvering away. Sonic Christmas Blast, 1996. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog returned for a quick Xmas special, where Sonic must save Santa Claus and restore Xmas. Hey. Sally cameoed, and Sonic became Santa. So he's the one delivering my presents every morning. Sonic Extreme. Cancel! The Nintendo 64 had Super Mario 64. The PlayStation 1 had Crash Bandicoot. And the Sega Saturn had... Nothing. Although they were supposed to have Sonic Extreme. Sonic's first jump into 3D. It was to feature four playable characters, including a new female lead called Tiara, who would have starred in 2D stages. The game went through years of development hell, and even caused the co-director to fall ill to Unomia. In the end, the project was cancelled and Sonic 3D was re-released instead. Websites such as Destructoid and Games Radar have speculated that the game could have been a source of inspiration for future games such as Super Mario Galaxy. But come on, Shigeru Miyamoto would never admit he got inspired by anything. I mean, look at Skyward Sword. The exploration is a lot like Ratchet and Clank at Crack of Time, and he claims he's never heard of Ratchet and Clank! Liar! Sonic Jam, 1997. Sega decided to release another Sonic collection, and this was the best one ever. Not only did you have the four classic games from the Genesis, 
but you could also play Sonic in 3D for the very first time, exploring Sonic's world. 3D blast, you lying bastard! It also had plenty of extras, including this brilliant Animaniac Sonic cartoon. Sonic R, 1997. Released for the Sega Saturn, this was a Sonic racing game that featured 10 playable characters, 5 race tracks, 2 multiplayer modes, and... That's about it. It was an average game, receiving criticism for being a Mario Kart knockoff. And the music that makes you feel like Gestapo mice are forcing you to smile all the time. However, the fanbase loves the music, but fear the Tails doll. Sonic Adventure 1998! Sega released the Dreamcast, and with it, Sonic's official 3D debut. Sonic himself received a slimmer redesign, and the gameplay was reworked to fit the new perspective. It featured six playable characters, including new faces, E-102, and Big the Cat, with the latter's gameplay involving fishing. It was also the first Sonic game to have a complex plot and voice acting, which was considered flat. The game sold brilliantly, and many say it's still the best 3D Sonic game. Sonic Adventure Action Figures, 1998. To coincide with the release of the game, Reasaurus, makers of the Crash Bandicoot action figures, produced two sets of action figures. A third set was planned, but cancelled. However, it was going to be based off Sonic Adventure 2, and would have included Super Sonic, Rouge, Shadow, and Dr. Eggman. Sonic Underground, 1999. Also to coincide with the release of Sonic Adventure, Deke produced Sonic Underground, which, to be honest, has nothing to do with the game it was promoting. In the show, Sonic had a brother and a sister named Manic and Sonya, who used musical instruments to fight evil. It also featured Knuckles for the first time in animated form, but there was no Tails. Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure 1999. Sonic zoomed to the Neo Geo Pocket Color with this game. It featured classic tunes from Sonic Jam and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and was well received, even getting a 10 out of 10 on IGN. Sonic Shuffle 2000. Sonic Shuffle was a party game released for the Dreamcast, which involved Sonic and his buddies entering a dream world to play on board games. The game introduced new characters Lumina and Void, and also featured Sonic's hilarious monkey mouth. The game received negative reviews, with many declaring it a Mario Party ripoff. Though that isn't surprising, considering it was made by the same people. Sonic Adventure 2 2001. The Dreamcast was having problems and Sega was hoping they could relight the system's success with Sonic Adventure 2. Unfortunately, while the game received positive reviews, including praise for its gameplay, sound, graphics, and story, it just didn't sell well enough, and the Dreamcast died. It introduced Shadow and Rouge to the Sonic family tree, and is considered by many to be the best 3D Sonic game. The main theme, Live and Learn, is also held in high regard. So Sonic had a lot of highs with some lows. But that didn't slow him down. Or did it? In 2001, the Dreamcast ended, and with it gone, Sonic was in trouble. Then the blue blur did the unthinkable. He went to Nintendo. Oh, no!